Ladies and gentlemen and beta testers of all ages, Piranha Games has finally updated MechWarrior Online to version 1.0.134. That's right, that first number is very important. Version 1. This puts us ever closer to the open beta release. We're not quite there yet, but this patch is setting the framework for it. There are three very important things that have been added to this game, and they all exist inside the Mech Lab, so I'll be going over those in just a little bit here. It's going to make Mech variants far more interesting than they have been before. First and foremost, if you are a beta tester right now, you will notice several things that has happened to your game. First, there have been some resets. Your battle mech inventory has been reset. Your item inventory has been reset. Your C-bills and mech warrior credits as well as your premium time, mech XP, pilot modules, everything has been reset. However, you have been given credit for the time you've put in. Founders packages will be given your credits. Mech warrior credit purchases will be retained. 75% of the C-bills you've earned since September 18th, 2012 will be given to you as well as XP earned since September 18th. So you might have lost your mech, you might have lost your items, but you're going to get a majority of your C-bills back so you can repurchase them. This might be good for some of you who may have made purchases that you weren't exactly happy with in the past. One thing that will not be resetting though are your friends lists and of course your user accounts. So everything that you have from beta, the use, the login, the friends you've made, you can keep all those. Well, now that we've covered the resets, uh, one of the things that they've added with this patch is a couple new mech variants. There's a new Jenner variant, a new Raven variant, a new Awesome variant, and they've added a new mech, the Cicada, which is a light class mech. Another mech making its way into the game here as a version 1 is the Yin Lo Wang, as you can see here from the home screen. As you can see from its description, this mech will yield you a 30% C-Bill boost when you're using it, and it also comes with a custom skin and unique variant. This mech can only be purchased with Mech Warrior credits. If you go into the Mech Lab and try to purchase a new mech, You'll see it here at the top, the Yin Lo Wang. Again, only purchasable by MechWarrior credits. You cannot use C-Bills. This mech sports an AC-20 and two medium lasers. It does have hard points for an anti-missile system, as well as another ballistic weapon. If you're interested, this mech with the Rising Sun paint job can be yours for 3,750 MechWarrior credits. Now let's talk about one of the most important changes that happened with this patch. The biggest and probably the most important of them all is that the Mech Lab has been given a flow redesign, making the Mech Lab a little easier to use. It will also prompt you to save your changes for each section of the Mech Lab that you're in, from loadout to modules to upgrades and even to your camo specs. This means that any changes you make, you'll be prompted that before you leave that tab, hey, you've done something here, do you want to keep these changes or abandon them? You have to make a choice of one or the other before you go to a new section. From there, several new upgrades have been added to your Mech Lab. Mech Warrior Tech that has been in the Battletech tabletop has finally been added. These were later technologies meant to help variants, and they're now in the game. These include ferrofibrous armor, endosteel internal structures, and double heat sinks. So why are these important, you might be asking, if you've never played Battletech or haven't played any previous MechWarrior games, maybe you just don't know what these are. These technologies were designed to save tonnage on a mech. You sacrifice critical slots on your mech in order to gain space. So this might allow you, if you say have a low armament based mech, maybe you only want a few weapons on the mech, but you want to increase its armor. Well, armor means tonnage. You add armor, you have to make the mech heavier, and your mech can only handle so much tonnage. So by adding, say, ferrofibrous armor, you have to take up critical slots. You take up those slots, and now it no longer weighs as much. This is the same thing with the endosteel internal structure. You basically change the inside structure to reduce how many internal slots you have to include ammo or other armaments. 
double heat sinks work the same way, only they will cost three times the critical slot spaces needed compared to a regular heat sink, and they will give you double the heat dissipation. This might not sound really great when you think about it. You're costing a, a two to three conversion there. However, again, if you have a lot of critical space left in your mech, it might be a conversion you're willing to make. To accommodate these new technologies, they've added what they call floating slots. These floating slots will be filled with the critical slot locations needed for things such as your ferrofibrous armor or your endo steel. Since these slots can be taken up anywhere on the mech, the game will automatically assign any slots that you've left unused and fill them with the slots required for the technologies you've purchased. Keep in mind that using any new technology, as with anything, comes at a cost. So you'll want to make sure that you have the C-bills required to make the jump. A few changes they've made behind the scenes since we're talking about the mech lab are that items in general have been increased in cost. However, engines have been reduced. This is supposed to make the overall prices of a mech be lower, but if you want a lot of customization and advanced systems, the costs will be higher. In the end, this should amount to a net gain for most mech warriors. Anyone that may have leveled their mech up to elite status, you might be happy to know that a new module has been added. This new module is advanced targeting, where you press V to activate a picture-in-picture -picture type aiming system. Now that we've covered the backbone of the game, which is the mech lab, let's go over some of the things they've changed in the gameplay. There's been some nice fixes here. For example, running into another mech would typically knock them or yourself down, sometimes both. Running into another mech will no longer knock it down. Line of sight rules have been changed slightly. It used to be that you required about a 50% view of a mech before it would get targeted on your HUD. Now you only need about 25% of a mech visible so that you can finally target them and give that information to your teammates. This will help with electronic warfare and spotting enemies at range. One big change that is rather nice to see on some of the water maps that they have are that explosions, laser weapons, and all that will actually now pierce the surface of water, so you will actually do damage to mechs that are sitting in water. It seems according to these notes that previously, if you fired into water, your weapons would stop there. Now they will pierce the water, go through and hit the mech. However, they will do reduced damage based on the depth of the water that you're shooting through. Now I've just gone over a partial list of what's in the patch notes. I highly recommend you go out and look. There have been a lot of little changes here and there, including cockpit lights flickering when you take hard hits, some information about the picture-in-picture -picture module, extended rangefinder, and smoother jump jet behavior, and multiple AMS working to actually shoot down more missiles. Quite a bit there. So I do recommend taking a look at it, especially if you're a veteran in the beta, to know exactly what's been changed and what's been fixed. Well, that's been a look at MechWarrior Online with the new Patch 1. Looks like we're getting very close to open beta. I'm looking forward to seeing some of you guys come in and having fun with this really great free-to-play game. I will try to continue my tutorial series that I started before. I'm definitely looking for more input regarding those, so if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see, I'm all open to it. I know that I will be working on Mech in Pilot Lab tutorials as those seem to be highly requested. However, if there is anything else that you would like to see, please let me know. You can do it here in the comments section, or you can send an email to theshadowpost at gmail.com. Again, that is theshadowpost at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you all on the battlefield.